everyone. My name is Sarah Penrose and I'm a University of Michigan student researcher on the project A Century of Women in the Carillon. Today I'm going to walk through the website for this project, which highlights the untold stories of 50 women who've shaped Carillon culture in the past 100 years, and which also provides resources for organizers around the world to celebrate the centennial in their own communities. Let's begin. Note that mobile devices operate differently, so for the best experience, we recommend accessing our website on a desktop computer. So when you first open our site, you will see our home page, and the left panel presents an introduction and background information about the project, as well as a comprehensive list of the women featured or mentioned throughout the site, and then at the bottom, a few recommended resources for further research. Now on the right, we have a map with a few pinned locations that correspond to where our featured women were active in their careers. To move around the map, you can click and drag your mouse, and then to zoom in or out, you can either pinch your fingers on the mouse pad or scroll your mouse, or you can click these plus or minus icons in the top left corner. I would recommend using the latter technique for more precise zooming. And then you can click on any of these pins to see the specific location and associated women. And clicking on the image will bring you to the category in which the woman's article resides. Finally, you can access the stories of these women using the tabs at the top of the screen, which include Carolanas, composers, writers, Carolan creators, and philanthropists. In this case, Carolan creators refers to women who are involved in the business or craft of casting and tuning bells. Now the other tabs, which include nominate first, events, resources, and about, are also available at the top. And I will walk through these later in the video. Now let's view the Carolina section. This category is broken into three subcategories, Australia and New Zealand, Europe, and North America and each subcategory has its own introductory page and articles. So let's start on Australia and New Zealand. The introduction page on the left offers key information about women Carolinas in this specific region. For example, Australasia was the first hub of formally appointed Carolinas in the world, starting in 1931 with Enid Carpenter. In addition to the featured women in this section, we sometimes include a list of additional women who do not have their own articles but should still be recognized. Then on the right of the page is a map that contains a few pins of where women in this category and region were active. Now one thing to be aware of is how to access hidden tabs on this screen. So if we go to the North America category, you can click on this bullet list icon on the right to access any remaining tabs. Now we can see what the stories look like on our site. If we navigate to the Composers tab and select Katerina von Rennes, her full page will appear here. Under her name, you can see her dates of birth and death and main location, which could be hometown or career location depending on the woman. Now this location or locations will be displayed on the map to the right as well. Then you can read her full article, view any embedded images, and even listen to embedded audio. Here you can press play and listen to one of Katrina's compositions, Zona Lead, played on the Carillon. Then, if you click on Medoncia, which was the first Caroline score published by a woman, you can view and download the score straight from Dropbox. Lastly, nearly all pages have suggested resources listed at the bottom, as well as a Creative Commons license of the text. Another nice feature on our site is embedded videos. A good example of this is on Gwen Taylor's page under Caroline Creators. In the middle of the article, you can watch a video compilation while listening to Scott Orr perform on the Loughborough War Memorial Carillon, which was produced by Gwen Taylor's Bell Foundry.
The other tabs on our site include Nominate Firsts, Events, Resources for Organizers, and About. Now the Nominate First page invites anyone to nominate women who are the first to accomplish something in the Carillon field during or after 1950. Then a committee will select up to 50 women from these nominations and we will feature these women on an interactive timeline. Next, the Events tab highlights several events such as concerts, lectures, and more around the world, and we also provide a form to submit event announcements. The map on this page corresponds with this list of events, and you can click on the pins to see what and where each event is. This page also has a calendar of celebratory and awareness days to assist organizers with programming their events throughout the year. For example, International Equal Pay Day occurs on September 18th this year, and Equal Pay Day in the European Union is on November 15th. Now moving on to the Resources for Organizers tab, this page provides several documents for organizers to utilize and they can also submit information about their publications or events so we can feature their plans on this website. All the documents on this page, such as the press release, logos, flyers, and bibliography of Carillon Music by Women can be accessed through this Dropbox folder. So if you click on this link, you will see all the resources and you can either click download at the top to download all the files, or you can click on individual subfolders or files and download those on their own. Finally, the About tab wraps up the project by giving credit to team members, authors, contributing researchers, and some of the resources we used for our research. And at the bottom of this page is a form for anyone to contact us with questions or comments. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you all enjoy exploring a century of women in the Carillon.